Okay, on to part two of our multi-day activity, getting you started using Git and building your own website. If you didn't finish part one, please just keep going from where you left off. But I'm gonna assume that you got at least to the point in part one where we had a pretty uh, simple website that we had published that just has some text in it. So I'm using Adam now because my TAs demanded it and here is my index.html. So it just has the phrase simple stuff in it and you can see that it is up here as well. And if I look up here on my uh, GitHub account and I look at the repository and I look at this file, I can see that everything's in good shape. Okay, so this is my starting point. One of the things you wanna do, um, you know, one of the, something that's really smart to do in general in life is to try to avoid doing extra work. So what we're gonna help you with today is getting started using a framework, a web development framework called Bootstrap. So what is Bootstrap? Bootstrap is a collection of CSS and JavaScript that you can integrate into your web pages and will help them look pretty decent pretty quickly. So let's look at how we get started with that. So go over to the Bootstrap Getting Started page. And if you scroll down here, there is a template that you can start with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut and paste that template into my document. I'm gonna go up here and get rid of this. And now I have a starting point. Now there's a couple of problems with this template that I'm gonna fix quickly. The biggest problems are that it's trying to load Bootstrap from my own website. So this link points to a relative link that should be in a subdirectory CSS and then a file named bootstrap.min.css. I don't wanna host that file myself. You could if you want to, you'd have to download it from somewhere. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use uh, Bootstrap's own content distribution network. So Bootstrap distributes uh, copies of this file that you can use. Uh, so I'm gonna replace this link with this one. You'll see this link points to a full URL. It points to maxcdn.bootstrap.com, blah, 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 blah. And if I cut and paste this into my browser, I can see it will actually load a file for me. So this is the CSS file that I'm going to use. It's been all smashed together because it makes it a little bit smaller and it's less data for your browser to retrieve. I also had to do the same thing with the JavaScript that is included by Bootstrap right here at the bottom. So I'm gonna just, again, replace this reference to a local JavaScript file with Bootstrap's JavaScript file distributed by CDN. And now I should be good to go. So let's go over here. Now, when you're, develop when you're doing web development, um, you know, one thing I could do is I could commit my changes, I could push this up to my repo, and I could look at this page over here. You'll see that this page hasn't changed yet. But I don't really want to do that. It's a little too much work. So instead, what I'm going to show you how to do is you can actually just load a file in Chrome. So if I open load file, this is the directory I'm working in. Here's my index.html file. And now I'm seeing the up-to-date content. So this gives me the nice way to make changes, reload the page, see those changes immediately, and not have to commit them or push them to my public website until I'm completely ready to do that. Um, and this is something I do all the time when I'm developing on the course website, when I build websites for my other classes or for my group. I always have a, a local development server set up or I'm looking at the files locally to make sure they look okay before I publish them. So in this case, you can see that the uh, things look a little bit different. So uh, the text is now bigger um, and uh, the text has been replaced by this hello world. Another really, really powerful tool you want to use when you're doing web development is the Chrome, uh, Chrome sort of developer tools. So if I right click on this, easiest way to get them open is just pick part of the page, right click on it, hit inspect. This opens this up and it also highlights the component in the Chrome developer tools. And the Chrome developer tools will tell you all sorts of stuff about these page elements. So in this case, it gives me all of this style information. Let me zoom in a little bit. It tells me that Bootstrap has made H1 elements 36 uh, pixels big. If I wanted to change that, I can make them 48 and that would look a little bit different. Um, all this stuff's covered in a lot more detail in the write-up, so please go through that. I'm kind of rushing uh, because I'm trying to get this done in 10 minutes. So. I'm not going to cover all the stuff that's in the write-up, but you should definitely look at that yourself. Okay, so now let's look at probably one of the most important features of the Bootstrap system, um, which is its grid system. So if you go over here and you go to CSS, this is kind of the starting point, and this is a long page, I know. There's a lot of information here, um, but it's, it's super interesting and super useful when you start building web pages. So what Bootstrap allows me to do is to define a grid for the page and put content into that grid and the grid sort of determines where it goes. And the important part about the grid is that the grid is responsive. So the grid allows me to have a column be different widths on different devices. 
let's see how that works. Okay, so uh, the first thing I need to do to use the grid system, where's my editor? Here it is. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this H1. I'm going to replace the body. Uh, the first thing I need to do is create a row. So columns and bootstrap always have to be inside rows. All right, so I've got my row. Um, and then I'm going to create a column. And Bootstrap's columns are named by how uh, large I want them to be on different size devices. And there's a couple of different uh, devices I can use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say on an extra small device, I want this to be 12 columns wide. The Bootstrap grid system is 12 columns. So 12 columns wide means that this column will span the entire page width. Um, however, on a small device, I want this to be six columns. On a medium-sized device, I want it to be four columns. Oops. Oh, you do have to get these right. And on a large device, I want it to be three columns. So what does this mean? So on a large device, this uh, column is going to be a quarter of the page. It's three divided by 12. On a medium-sized device, it's going to be a third, four divided by 12. On a small device, it's going to be half. And on an extra small device, like a mobile device, it's going to be the full width. And this is a really powerful way of, of ensuring that your content is readable and browsable on a variety of different types of devices, because clearly a large screen with a lot of real estate is very different than a tiny phone. Uh, even the aspect ratio of a large screen is different, right? It's, it's wider than it is tall. Uh, whereas a phone is the opposite. Okay, so let's put some content in here. Uh, this is my first column. And to show you how the column system works, let me create another column. So I'm gonna create another column here. Uh, this is another column. Now again, I'm glossing over a lot of stuff that's in the write-up, so please go through the write-up um, and pause this as needed as you get confused. Or okay, so I'm gonna save this file. I'm gonna go back into my browser. I'm gonna go, I'm, uh, this is the file I'm loading from my local file system, and I'm going to hit um, reload. And now I can see what's happening. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. Um, so this screen at this point is considered wide by Bootstrap. And if I, one of the things that's really helpful about the Chrome developer tools is that they will show you things, particularly about uh, div, el div elements on your page. So you can see that this div is spanning about a quarter of the page, which is what I expected. This div is spanning about a quarter of the page. The right side of that div is indicated by the, the blue rectangle is about in the middle of the page. In fact, it's probably almost exactly in the middle of the page. Okay, now if I make this much smaller, you can see that the divs are resizing. So at this point, it's about 50-50. At this point, this is a now a medium-sized screen, so it's a, a third. And then if I get really small, they start to stack because Bootstrap has decided this is now a small device and the things are going to stack on top of each other. A neat way to do this um, in the Chrome Developer Tools is to click on this little icon over here that looks like a, a phone, and that'll open up a device display. And so now this is showing me what this would look like, like on a Galaxy XS5, for example. I don't know why that device is in here, or an iPhone 6 or whatever. So different size displays, this is what the page looks like. And in this case, the page is small enough that the columns have started to stack. Okay, so this is just a very, very simple example of getting you, let me turn this off, uh, getting you up and running with Bootstrap. There are a gazillion Bootstrap elements, and the reason to use Bootstrap is largely because they've done a lot of work for you. So you can get you can just drop these CSS and JavaScript files into your page and start writing HTML, and the HTML will look pretty good. You have to do a little bit of work to sort of set up the, the, um, the columns and the rows and stuff like that, but in general, it makes it very easy to do things. So my whole group's website is all uh, Bootstrap, and for example, this layout right here is really, really easy to do in Bootstrap, and you'll notice that as you change the page size, eventually these stack, and now the images are responsive, and the responsive images are very easy to do with Bootstrap as well. And so there's just a lot of like really nice features that Bootstrap brings along that are really, really simple um, to integrate into your projects. Okay, uh, this is the uh, second part of the assignment. So hopefully at the end of this assignment, you'll be playing around with Bootstrap, uh, looking at some of the various elements that you can use to create your own web pages and, and just getting going there because Bootstrap is a, is a great way to get started. Um, on the other hand, if you're building Bootstrap sites and you start to get tired of how they look, there are ways around that. Check out the Customize page, check out the Themes page. Um, there are ways to get Bootstrap sites to look very different from other Bootstrap sites so that your site has a distinctive look and feel. Good luck today, have fun. Uh, building websites is super awesome. Uh, they're out there for the entire world to see. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I hope you enjoy this, this second part of this activity.